brother. Now, here we take turns cleaning out these water holes, and for some unknown reason, Candy always gets the messiest job. <laughs> yeah. Just seems like some fellas never have no luck, don't it? Yeah. Come payday, there's gonna be some changes. Changes? What kind of changes? I'm gonna take myself into Virginia City. And I'm gonna get me a brand new set of clothes. I mean, hat, shirt, pants, boots, the works. And ain't gonna be work clothes, either. And I'm gonna get myself a haircut. And a shave and a four-hour bath to get this mud out of my hide. I'm gonna get myself all dressed up. And I'm going out among them. Really have some high living, huh? Higher than a courthouse flagpole, brother. Hey, you know, a fella can't do too much of that high living just on a dollar, and that's all you're gonna have after you get through buying all them duds. Oh, he's not gonna have that much. See, I seem to recall Candy getting an advance from Pa on this month's wages. Whoops. They're gonna have enough money for a new handkerchief, let alone do any of that high living. <laughs> <laughs> all right, I forgot. Next month. Next month. <laughs> well, we'll see you next month. Yeah. <laughs> It'll be an easier way to make a living. Right? Hey, you keep digging. You might strike it rich. <laughs> we'll see you, Candy. Yeah. Are you Mr. Kennedy? Yeah. Did you know a Paiute named Billy Two Biscuit? Paiute? Yeah, I know. Where were you the uh, first week in April this year? What's that to you? Could be very important. First week of April? I don't know. I... I was in Billy Biscuit's cabin, that's where I was. The, uh, the south slope of Squaw Mountain. How was he? Hurting. He broke his leg. Oh, you saved his life. You found him in a snowstorm with a broken leg. You took him to his cabin, nursed him, fed him. If you know all that, what are you asking me for? To make sure you're the right man. Billy Two Biscuit uh, died recently, a snake bite. He made you his sole heir. He left you his mining claim. Poor Billy, poor Billy. Now, I represent Nevada Mining Incorporated. I'm here to make you one firm take-it-or-leave-it offer. $100,000 plus standard royalties for the right to develop and work the mine. 100000 what? Dollars. 50000 in cash, 50000 in shares in Beulah Land Sales and Development Corporation. I have the cash with me. Got something you want me to sign? Yes, sir, I sure do. Here you are. <laughs> right there, the bottom line. Here? Right, that's it. Right. <laughs> How long is it to dinner? I don't know, about an hour or so, I guess. Sunstroke? Hmm. Could be. Local weed, maybe. <laughs> hey, buddy, you all right? Yeah, well, all right. Have you ever seen a whole satchel full of money? Look at that. Look at that. Here. Here. Have a sample. <laughs> that's real money. That, 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 that's five hundred dollars. Still there. 
picture. <laughs> it's still real. It's hard to believe. I'll tell you, that Billy Two Biscuit sure must have thought a lot of you. I was kind of a hermit, Joe. I... Poor Villa, I don't think he knew anybody else. What are you going to do first, Candy? The first thing I'm going to do is I'm not going to worry about what I'm going to do first. I'm just going <laughs> to float and enjoy. Yeah, don't blame me. This uh, Beulah Land Corporation, Candy, did Mr. Hornsby tell you anything about it? Just that the stock certificates are in this bag, and uh, I looked, and they are. That's all I know. Mm. I was just wondering. I'd never heard of them. I'll find out and let you know. I want to say that every minute I've spent here has been a pure pleasure. Uh, I imagine the biggest one was clean out that water hole, huh? Oh, yeah, they're fun. <laughs> Even that. I don't quite know how to say this, but uh, I'm in your debt. Oh. Oh, I am. I am. If you ever feel a pinch for money, all you have to do is whistle, and, and I'll be glad to help. <laughs> Candy. Thank you. I'm going to have a party, a big party. Be a favor to me if you could spare Hoss and Joe to help with the planner. Oh. Well, if you think that uh, Hoss and Joe are good at planning parties, of course. <laughs> Can you leave now? We're halfway there. Let's go. Let's go. Hang on, Thanks, millionaire. Uh, Candy. I forgot. <laughs> Come on, money bags. <laughs> Estimated at one million dollars. <laughs> Mr. Canaday, I'm Harriet Caster. We've never really met. We did once. This is my daughter, Ruth. We're having an open house Sunday afternoon at two. Just good friends, good talk, good food. We'd be delighted if you'd join us. Uh, well, I'd... I'd uh, good, good. We'll see you at two. Come along, dear. Want to be among the first. Long had the feeling that you'd be a man of importance. Mm -hmm. H. Parker Smith, Mr. Kennedy. Spent my life in the world of finance. Be a pleasure to serve as your investment counselor. Well, uh, my card, sir. Uh, 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 gentlemen, Mr. Mr. Kennedy has a lot of business to discuss. If you'll excuse us, Mr. Kennedy, come right in. If you'll excuse us, gentlemen, please. Excuse me, George. Mr. Williams, excuse me. Oh, Marshall, 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 well, he's a very important fellow. You're Mr. Smith. Did you guys read the papers? I'm the newest millionaire in town. Oh, I forgot. I forgot. How do you like it? Uh, yeah, it's a little small, but it'll do for now. For now? <laughs> yeah, for now. Till I uh, knock out a few walls or maybe build myself a brand new one, I'm do a lot of entertaining. <laughs> oh, that's right. I almost forgot you're invited to Harriet Castor's tea party. Put you up there with the best of them. Well, give me a chance to discuss my new stock holdings with some of the rest of them millionaires. You know, I didn't even know you knew Harriet Castor. Where'd you meet her? Hmm. Oh, uh, for the July parade, I told her she was standing on my foot. Oh, well, he really knows her, then. Forty miles of fine print in this thing. Mr. Kennedy! Mr. Kennedy, it's the hotel manager! Uh, Mr. Kennedy! Uh, Mr. Kennedy, it's the hotel manager, Mr. Kennedy! Compliments of the management. Well, thank you. Thank you. They were a little busy right oh, now. Oh, yes, of course. Now, I just wanted to assure you that myself and the staff are at your disposal. Stand ready uh, to do anything at all to, to make your stay worthwhile and enjoyable. Uh, special food. Wait, wait, wait. Wait, wait, wait. Shh. Shh. <laughs> Beulah Land Corporation. Mm, that's so good. They sell land. That makes sense. Uh, ranches and farms in Beulah Valley. Wherever that is. Oh, didn't it say where? In 
Nevada. Dollar says. Here, take a look. Say the same thing. I meant the money. I think I did buy a suit. A suit? When that tailor left here, he was talking about six. Well, a man can use six suits. That jewelry fella had some good-looking watches. Yeah, I saw a good-looking watcher watching your money. The money. Money? Where's the money? You looking for this? <laughs> Thanks, Joe. Why don't you be smart? Put it in the bank. Now, and uh, then let's have a nice cold beer. Huh? You mean beer? With your kind of money, I want champagne. I'll take either. <laughs> You'll take both. <laughs> hey, watch it. What's your money? Virginia City Spider Stack. And what's this? Imported beer. The best. Came all the way from Europe. Right around the horn. Well, oh, with, uh, course, a little more, but, uh, Mr. Candy can sure afford it now that he's a millionaire. If I'm not a millionaire, I... You ain't changed a bit, Candy. Now, that's the good part. You hit it big, but you're the same old Candy. Thank you. Uh, you son of a gun, you. All right, now, we got the guest list. Virginia uh, City is uh, coming. Now, what about, uh, what about music, entertainment? Oh, we're gonna have a lot of people. It's gonna be a big band, or they won't hear it. Hey, how about the fireman's band? They ain't very good, but they sure are loud. Hey, they are, they're loud. Yeah, all right. Make it two bands. That way the folks won't have to stop dancing when the uh, musicians are out getting a beer. Very good, very good. Two bands, loud. I like that. Honey. Now, what about food? You gotta have some good food. What do you like? Well, Canada. I Canada's think we better hair. have a couple of... Jim here. I own the Rocker H Ranch. Oh, I've heard of the brand, yeah. Been building it for 10 years. Fighting Paiutes, Nestors, Rustlers. Got a fair spread now. I'm getting bigger all the time. That's great. If I want to buy a ranch, I'll look you up. You think two is enough? It's well, not for sale. Three, huh? What I'm here for, what's this Beulah Land Company? It says here you're a major stockholder. Oh, yeah, that just happened. I uh, haven't gotten into it yet. I got a brother, little Billy, lives in New York. Got a wife and five kids. He's doing fine, but he wants to come west. So he sold his business and bought himself 200 acres of Beulah Valley, orchard land. Good grass, water, roads, bridges. It sounds like a good deal to me. Where is Beulah Valley? I've been in Nevada 20 years. I never even heard of it. Well, I don't know. But I'll find out. If you want to come by the hotel tomorrow, I'll tell you all about it, all right? See me tomorrow at the hotel. Here you are, Mr. Kennedy. Finest watches in the world. Solid gold nugget chain. Oh, uh, what's that? The bartender said it was down here somewhere. So the brand new office just opened yesterday. Hey! What do you want to know what time it is? You told us four times in the last three minutes. Hey. Hey, there it is. New signs. Huh? What do you mean you don't know? You work here? 
I just started yesterday. Who does know? Mr. Perry. But he isn't here. When will Perry be here? Tomorrow. He said he'd be here all day tomorrow. Yeah, well, so will I. You better have some answers by then, too. Mm. Gentlemen. Well, here, Mr. Kennedy. All that money it must be wonderful. Oh, when I find out, I'll let you know. Right now, I want to know where Beulah Valley is. Well, like I told that gentleman, I just started working. I don't really know. M Mr. Perry did say it was east of here. Well, so's New York. And the Mississippi. How far east? He didn't tell me. Well, I've ridden all over the eastern part of Nevada, and I never heard of no Beulah Valley. Hey, maybe we can find out at the courthouse. Uh, my new watch says the courthouse is closed. Let's grab some more of that seasick beer. Hey, thanks. Stay. Oh. Uh, bling coffee now, yes? No, later. Uh, did you order breakfast? Three breakfast. Light eggs, ham, toast, coffee. Is that all? Plenty breakfast. I ye knows how much three men eat. Maybe. I.E. doesn't know Hoss Cartwright. Hey, you've been in there for two hours splashing around. When are you getting out? Been in there long enough to grow fins. Oh, well, yeah. Well, I promised myself a long, hot bath to get that water hole mud out of my hide, and I'm just collecting. <laughs> Go catch him double order of everything, boss. Right. Who, who's that? Oh, that's I.E. I hired him this morning. I for what? I needed somebody to fetch and carry. Oh, well, everybody needs one of those. Well, of course. We're going to go fetch up some breakfast. You want to come along? No need. Breakfast's on its way up. Gee, it's nice to be rich, isn't it? Ah, uh, yes. Mm. <laughs> You can't understand to see good food going to waste. Well, we noticed. Hey, here's one from an old friend of yours, a fellow named Billy Martingale. Ever heard of him? Well, anyway, he wants to borrow $10,000 from you. Hmm. Maybe he's going to pay you back, though, $2 a week. <laughs> ah, that's all right. He must come from a long-lived family. This one from a little girl I went to school with. My town I was never in. Oh. <laughs> hey, here, here's a beauty. Hey, you didn't go to school with this girl, but you know her real well. Yeah, you ever hear of a girl named Sally Simpson? No. You don't know her? Well, you, you're, you're going to. You better show that to your lawyer. Hey, here's a little girl that wants to marry me. If I send $3,000, I don't have to come to the wedding. I don't blame her. <laughs> Go away, please. Nobody home. Go away, please. Nobody home. Mr. Kennedy! Atwood Perry! You will answer them, but I've got to talk Perry. to you. Oh, yeah, yeah, yeah. Hey, let him in. Perry. Mr. Kennedy. Yes. Come in. Nice come in, to meet you. This is uh, Joe Cartwright, uh, Hoss Cartwright, friends of mine. Right, right. Oh, oh, yeah. Would oh, you uh, like some breakfast? Uh, no, thank you very much. Uh, I was sorry to have missed you yesterday. I yeah. always like to know our stockholders, especially when their holdings entitle them to a seat on the board. What? The board of directors. Your 5,000 shares entitle you handsomely. Uh, may I change my mind and uh, have a cup of coffee? Board of directors? Yeah. Coffee, yes. Sit down, sit down, sit down. Uh, I'll get it for you. Thank you. Um, how do you take it? Uh, just black, please. Oh. <clears throat> Ain't that something? Yesterday, the only CD he had was on board a horse. <laughs> well, that's how to succeed, though. Hard work, and a fella come along handing you a satchel full of money. <laughs> that's right. You shall not go unrewarded, my friends. Oh, thank you. Look, I brought a little uh, booklet that you might study at your leisure. Tells you all about the corporation. Hmm. Thanks. Uh, we're always on the lookout for capable young men, you know. Have you uh, ever built a bridge or uh, built a road or maybe dug a well? Yeah, all three. <laughs> you ought to see him clean a water hole. All three? Yeah. Really? Mm -hmm. Well, then you're my man. You're hired. 
Uh, no, 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 no. Talk to me in a year or two, because uh, until then, I'm going to be doing some resting. Well, I may have said it badly. What I'm offering you is a position as vice president. In charge of field operations. Well, um, Atworth, I'm trying to tell you that I've retired. Well, loafing gets to be pretty hard work. I think you'll find that out in a day or two. Hmm. No, knowing him, I don't think so. Speaking of local, we better get back to the ranch. Probably gonna think we retired. No. Mr. Perry, pleasure to meet you. Nice to meet you, Come gentlemen. Aye, get their hats, huh? Beulah Valley? Mm-hmm. Where's it at? Why, that's right next door to heaven. <laughs> it's probably easier to show you than to tell you about it, and I'll be very happy to do that one of these days soon. Well, we've been living here for a long time. I just never heard of it, that's all. Well, look, since your friends are leaving, why don't you come with me and have a look at your new office? My office? I didn't say I was going to take that job. No, but you said you were going to think about it. You might as well have a look at your new office. Come on. Vice President. Hey, you got my hat? Yeah, if it still fits. <laughs> later, fellas, later. Yeah, we'll see you, I was just passing Mr. Kennedy. How nice to see you again. Uh, Ruth is thinking of buying a Tennessee Walker, and she'd like to have your advice. With the horses I've been riding, I don't think it'll be much help, but I'd sure like to try. Oh. It's good to know that our new vice president has so many important friends. I'll be in my office to drop by first chance again. Right. I've got your soup ready for Just a Just take a look at these handmade beauties. Pardon look, me, gentlemen. Please. Mr. Kennedy, look, we were discussing this, look, weren't we? Yes. yes. The most beautiful workmanship. Uh, uh, well, I like iron. Now, look, Henny, please. Right? I'm trying to explain to this Gibson, man. please. Surprise. Yeah. Uh, I'm, gee, I'm glad you could come by. Can I get you? Oh, I see. Uh, I.E. already got you. Yes, he got me some tea. Won't you join me? Yeah. I.E.? Oh, why, I'm sorry. He's, he stepped out. He did what? He stepped out. He went to get me some cakes, um, cookies. You'd want me to have them, wouldn't you? Well, sure. A whole lot of them, if that's what you want. Sit down. I just came to say hello. You know, I was surprised there wasn't many people in the hall. Well, I think it's because uh, I've already bought everything in town. <laughs> I've met millionaires before, but not like you. Oh, is that a fact? Yeah. They were all old and fat and ugly, but you're not. <laughs> well, I'm not uh, old. Or fat, or bald, and you're certainly not ugly. Now that I've found you, I'm I'm wondering what you're gonna do. Oh, I just remember I've, uh, I've got to run an errand. Oh, this is my lucky day. What? Well, I have nothing to do. I could go with you. One for each of you. Oh, are you serious? <laughs> wow. I, you like they it? are beautiful. I like it. They're magnificent. He's... But why? You got birthdays coming up sometime. Call them birthday presents. <laughs> well, you can't. It's awfully nice of you, but, you know, they're obviously very expensive saddles, and, well, are they just too fine for working stockmen? You know where we're close to church. These are Sunday saddles. <laughs> Every man ought to have one. In that case, there's nothing we can say except thank you. <laughs> hey, thank you very much, Kenneth. Hey, thank you, buddy. <laughs> thank you, Jimmy. Hey, look, we uh, we got some fresh coffee inside. Why don't you and your friend come on? Yeah, in? come on. In. Uh, thank you, but uh, we got to be getting back. Hey, Kenny, did you ever find out where that Beulah Valley was? Uh, not yet, but I took the job. I'm working for Beulah Corporation now, so I'll find out and let you know. Hey, you're vice president, huh? Well, that's what it says on the door. I'll see you. Hey, good luck. Yeah. With everything. Thank you, Candy. You bet. See ya. Oh, 
these are really magnificent sandals. Wow. Something bothering you? Yeah. Yula Valley? Yeah, Beulah Valley. It just doesn't make any sense to me. If it's if it's so beautiful and so marvelous, why has nobody ever heard of it? People sell ranches for a dollar. Yeah, a dollar made it legal. And then the seller didn't have to tell you what you're buying, neither. You sure then? Of course I'm sure. Of course I'm sure. If you're so smart, how come we rode to four different county seats before we finally came here where all the deed transactions are recorded? A nice day for riding. Besides, I didn't know there was such a place as this until that fellow in the saloon told me about it. Now I'm beginning to think there ain't no such place as that Beulah Valley. Oh, that's probably just a new name. What we're looking for is a, a transaction of a large piece of land in the name of that. Atworth Perry fellow. Yeah, I'm beginning to think he don't exist neither. Atworth Perry. I do hereby sell for the sum of one dollar. Sections 21, 22, 24, 26, 27, a lot of others. Yeah, you Township it. 12. Let's take a look at that map. Yeah. All right, section 21, 22, 24, 26. Uh, never mind the sections, little brother. We've been there. Yeah, we sure have. Let's go. Thanks a lot. Thank you, gentlemen. to see you. There, I have some things that you really must see. Now, I think that red and white... I think blue and gold would be much better. Pretty. Red and white is much more effective. Come into the dining room and I'll show you. Hey, yes, ma'am. I know exactly where the band must go. <laughs> go here all by yourself? You have plenty of help planning your party. You don't need me. Oh, yes, I do. Mr. Cannon, Mr. Cannon, sorry to disturb you, but I, I can't get those suits ready unless you come in for a fitting. Um, uh, later. I get the definite idea you don't like parties. You're right. I don't. How about a picnic? I like picnics. I know a spot. I could have somebody hitch up the buggy. We could go down by a little lake. Well, what about Melody? Let her find her own picnic. Oh, I'll have the cook pack us a lunch. Candy, mind taking a little ride with us? Uh, later. I want to show you something, Candy. It's kind of important. Uh, I, I think they're pretty serious about this. You better go with them. Well, I, I guess I have to. I'll see you later. said his brother bought from the Beulah Corporation. 200 acres, orchard land, grass, water, roads. What's that got to do with this? You're looking at Beulah Valley. Yeah, 
used to be called Starvation Flat. Mr. Perry changed the name of it. Are you sure? Uh, sure, we looked it up. Perry bought 15,000 acres of this paradise for Beulah Corporation. What are you going to do about it? <laughs> Wait a minute. What? Why look at me? Why look at you? You're a stockholder and vice president. Candy. People back east are, them are spending every penny they got buying up what they think is good orchard land. They're moving their whole families out here. Beulah Valley's a lot closer to hell than it is to heaven. Even the lizards can't grow out there. Sand, alkali, and rocks. You couldn't grow anything but a dust storm on that land. Well, you know you're only partly right. Because water will make all the difference. And the proof is right there in that flower pot. Now, that's soil from Beulah Valley. It's water and a little fertilizer. And it's a healthy plant. But there's no water out there. Death Valley's a garden spot compared to what you're selling. It's a completely legal operation. Yesterday, today, and tomorrow. We have not and will not break any laws. You told Jim Hare's brother he's buying orchard land. That's got to be fraud. Why don't you sit down, Mr. Kennedy? Because I think the time has come for me to tell you some of the facts about corporate life. I'm listening. Beulah Land Development does not sell land to individuals, but only to the Beulah Land Development Company. Now, that's a separate and, and individual entity. That's a sales organization with offices in the major cities back east. So they do the selling, and they tell the lies. Well, the salesmen have been known to exaggerate, but if Mr. Hare reads the contract he signed, he'll find out that he got exactly what he paid for. 200 acres of land. Well, what about the roads and the good grass and the water? The roads will be built, wells will be dug. It's all part of our arrangement and our deal with Beulah Land Development Corporation. When do you start? Well, we're in the planning stage right now. As soon as our plans are completed, why, we'll start assembling the equipment and the crews. When? Well, that's hard to say. Because our vice president in charge of field operations has been much too busy to talk about it. Me? Yes, you. I'm supposed to dig the wells and find the water? <laughs> that's right, Mr. Kennedy. But there's no water out there. You and I both know that. Well, you may believe that if you like, but I have a little more faith. <laughs> Look. It's a dog-eat-dog -dog world. It's been that way since the dawn of time. Do you know the Romans even had a, a phrase for it? Caveat emptor. Let the buyer beware. There's got to be a way to stop you. Now, before you start bucking and kicking and spending a lot of time and money on expensive lawyers, you better stop and think about the stock that you own. It'd make you a very rich man. Great fortunes are started just this way. And remember, it's perfectly legal. Send him away. He cheat you blind. Make come shall fight every merchant, 20 cents every dollar. Then he doubled the bill. This one he multiplied 10 times. There's no beer. How about some real good whiskey? I talked to Perry. Real operation is completely legal. The law can't touch it. What are you going to do? The law can't stop him. What can I do? If they sell 15,000 acres of that desert, a lot of people are going to get hurt. Mr. Perry said the Romans had a phrase for that. Let the buyer beware. He also said all I have to do is sit still, and I'm going to get very rich.
Show me the door. I'm here because I'm in trouble. I need your help. Well, sit down. Have something to eat. Tell us about it. I've been trying to figure out a way to stop Perry. I've been having a lot of no luck. The uh, Bueller Land Corporation sells only to corporations outside the state. Is that the trouble? That's right. And they don't make any promises they can't keep. Other corporations do that. Mm -hmm. Have some dumplings. Hop Singh really outdid himself. Hop Singh, bring another plate out here. I'm George Thurston. Is Ben Cartwright here? Yes. Come here. George, oh, come on here. <laughs> You're right on time. I try to be. Yeah, you must be the Mr. Canada that Ben mentioned in his That's telegram. Right, Thank you very much for coming. Well, it's part of my job. That's right. The legislators and the governor feel that the state land commissioner should go where he's needed. I have to tell you, Mr. Perry came to my attention two years ago. Huh? A timber fraud. He was sentenced to a year in jail, but appealed and wiggled free. I found him to be slippery, dishonest. And a complete scoundrel. Excuse my not knocking. But a scoundrel. That's what you called me after the appeal. What are you doing here? I heard you were in town. Now, any documents that you might want to see I have in this portfolio? There you are, Mr. Thurston. He's much too helpful and much too happy, but... We might as well get on with it. If there are any questions, I'll be... Well, I'll ask them. So what is this? Uh, that's the uh, list of landowners. This? Oh, that's the map of Beulah Valley. Just where is Beulah Valley? Um, Beulah Valley is, uh, or was, Starvation Flat. Uh, Mr. Perry renamed it. Here are the names and addresses. There were 200 of them. Men who bought acreage in that waste. Yeah, not from me and not in Nevada. They bought from corporations in the East. Uh, George, I bought... 200 acres right in the middle of Starvation Flat. And I bought them right here in Nevada. Oh, no, you didn't, because I didn't sell it to you. But I did. And I'm a vice president of Beulah Land Corporation. You're fired. <clears throat> I'm afraid it's a bit late for that, uh, Mr. Perry. Uh, George, I bought this land yesterday. 200 acres. Well, well. And uh, what were you promised, Mr. Cartwright? Oh, other marvelous things. Uh, deep wells, sweet water, fertile orchard land, good grass, and all in writing. The sweetest words I ever heard. I am not going to jail. If you just take it very easy, nobody's going to get hurt. Just 
happened to be passing by the door out there and saw this fellow backing out with a gun in his hand. And how long were you out there just passing the door? Ever since you came in, Paul thought it might be a good idea. It was. You gentlemen just escort us. I think we'll take a little walk down and say hello to the sheriff. Hey, I'm afraid. Where are your glasses? Oh, 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 not right now. Uh, some reporters waiting downstairs to talk to George and me. They uh, want to know all about the fuel of Andy. Arrives and decline. <laughs> Can't hurry back. It's a lot more than that. Right. Really? Oh, giving away all that money, well, I, I think it was just wonderful. It wasn't all that wonderful. Like, I got the mining claim back. Yeah. <laughs> Us, have us some more champagne. Yeah. Hey, why don't you stop popping around like a bug in a oh, bottle yeah. and relax, enjoy your party. Uh, I will in a minute. I'm ready now. It does have a mine and lots of credit. Unlimited. So they tell me. Well, if you got unlimited credit, how about some more champagne? <laughs> Come right up. Right this way. That's Kennedy. There, there he is, right there. Kennedy. Thank you. What are they gonna do for you? My credentials, Howard Fiber, Bureau of Indian Affairs. I understand you recently inherited a mining claim from Billy Two Biscuit, a Paiute Indian, deceased. Uh, yeah, yeah, I, uh, I sold it, but I just got it back. My duty is to inform you that all mining claims and properties due under Paiute law, honored and enforced by the United States government and the Bureau of Indian Affairs, become the property of the Paiute tribe upon the death of said owner. I didn't know that. You do now. I've taken over the claim for the Paiute tribe. Good day, sir. Take, take it back! Take it back! Well, it was a lot of fun while it lasted, folks, but uh, the party's over. I'm afraid I'm going to have to ask you for immediate payment of your bill. Six suits. I want my money. Me first. Where's mine? Gentlemen, I gave back the money, you see. And the Indians just took back the mine. All, all I have is this. Oh, oh, wait a minute. Oh, 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 it's been nice. Maybe someday somebody will give you another mine or something. <laughs> when you get all the rest of your bills paid back. All right. Some payday. I'm going to go into Virginia City and buy me that new suit of clothes. Well, you can have some more of that high living, huh? Oh, well, uh, no, I've, uh, I've had some of that, and it's hard work. <laughs> this time, I'm going to find a better way to go. Hey, speaking of going, we better get back to the ranch. Yeah. Hey, what time is it? You still got that fancy gold watch of yours, don't you? Amy, I want you to remember one thing. Oh, now? The way you act, you'd think I was 
I was getting old. Now, Amy, remember one thing. Jeff McIntyre's a young man. Now, he, he doesn't know what it was like when we came to Nevada, and uh, he doesn't think the older settlers have any special privileges. He's a Johnny come yesterday, still wet behind the ears. He is the judge. He's a firm man, and he's an honest man. So when you get in there, try to, well, try to look a little contrite. Got nothing to be contrite about. Like always, I asked Si, and like always, he said, you got to do what's right, Amy, and that's what I done. to see you, Ben. Maybe with you here, Mrs. Wilder will be a little more reasonable this time. Taint me you who's unreasonable, judges. It's, it's Roberts there. Amy, please sit down. Thank you. Now, just whose fence you think you've been pulling out time and again? And whose land do you think it's on? Yours? No, mine. Oh, it, it, it don't matter whose land it is. The deer been running along that land down to my creek for longer than any of us have been breathing. They got prior rights. Mrs. Wilder, this is the fourth time you've been before me, brought on charges by Mr. Roberts of malicious destruction. It simply can't go on. Oh, yes, it can go on, and it will, too, as long as that robber keeps dirty in everything he touches. You cut down every single tree you ever owned. You lay the land stark naked. You poison every drop of water. Amy. You know what that means for all of God's critters? Starvation, that's what. Fish turning belly up. Nothing to eat for the birds, nor the deer, nor, nor, nor the coon, nor the coyote, nor even the poor old cougar. The poor old cougar? Oh, of course it's your fence. But you just put that fence up to keeping the deer out of my creek, just so as to plague me, just so as to black mail me into selling you that land and the water rights I own down Carson Way. Land you want so you can build a dirty old stamp mill and poison another street. Amy, would you please sit down? She's worried about a few fish, and I'm trying to help the mine owners and the economy of Virginia City. Well, I'm not to be blackmailed. Not by nobody. Not for nothing. Not till, till Satan's home ranch freezes solid. Now, I paid my fine of four, and I'll pay it again, and I'll pay it any time that that robber there builds a fence to stop them deer. Mrs. Wilder, the next time it may not be that simple. you worry about next time, next time. I'll be in the wagon, Ben. I just can't stand the smell around here. Everybody in town's talking about it, Ben. She's senile. It would be so much easier, so much kinder all around if she just agreed to commit herself. Maybe you can talk to her. Ever since I died, you're the only one she'll listen to. And it's for her own good. For whose good? Hers? <laughs> all right. No. No, sirree. Amy may be eccentric, but she's sure not senile. Can we stop by the hardware store, Ben? I ordered me 500 pounds of birdseed. They must come in. 500 pounds? Oh, sure, Amy. Let's go by the hardware store and pick it up. After the long winter, them birds will be needing all of that seed. Yeah. Try to get Amy to have a doctor's examination. She doesn't have none of that. 
Well, this fellow Roberts, he's a lumberman, stamp mill. Well, he, uh, well, the so-called final lady in this town, they're trying to make out that uh, Amy Senile want to have it committed to an institution. Can they do that? Browbeat a helpless old lady like that? Not if you stop her. You're next to kin. Uh, just the same, I wish you'd talk to Amy and see if you can get her to act a little more circumspectly. And she's not exactly helpless, Amy. She has her own way of thinking and doing things, always has. Well, uh, say that she uh, keeps peculiar company. Oh, you mean all those stray animals she takes in? My brother's letters are always full of them. The deer and whatnot. Yeah, among others. Oh, you're not nice, Portland. You can't bring yourself to say it. Amy's an eccentric, isn't that it? But aren't we all in one way or another? <laughs> what I expected. I thought Cyrus left her well off. Oh, he did. But Amy doesn't care much about how things look. Well, you know how Amy is. No, I don't. Not really. Thank you. <laughs> I haven't known Amy for years, except through letters. And she hasn't written many of those lately. It's hard, right? Who's that you got there with you? It's me, Amy. Margaret. Margaret. Oh! You look as fine as a spring sunrise, but you always was a person. <laughs> Why didn't you tell me she was coming? I did, two weeks ago. Two weeks ago? Oh, 20 years back, I could remember everybody and everything, but last week and the week before gets clean away from me. <laughs> <laughs> About the load of salt you ordered. Oh, dear, will be glad to hear that. Put it in the barn for me, would you? I hope this ain't all you brought along with you. Oh, my trunks will be here in a few days. Uh, let me carry that. Oh. Um, Amy, what about Ben? Oh, Ben has all that unloading to do. Besides, you don't want to hear a couple of old hens gossip, do you? <laughs> now, you you can sleep in the spare room upstairs, because I've got to get fresh sheets and all. First, I better fix us some supper. Oh, you must be starved to death. Come on, boys. We'll get fed, too. Yes, you know, the food they serve you in them way stations ought better be buried in the backyard. Just sit down and make yourself to home. Come on. What's the matter? Oh, that's just Harriet. <laughs> Nothing to worry about. You probably scared her worse than she did you. <laughs> you knew she was here? Well, no, but the door's always open. Harriet, she just comes and goes. That little fella there on the table, he's... He's named Squirrel. <coughs> Ain't got around to naming him yet. <coughs> and this old fella here, this <coughs> crow, what's the matter there? You see, <coughs> he hurt his leg. You notice he got it bandaged. It's going to be all right, though. I call him Mr. Poe. <coughs> yes, after the writer fella. Poe, oh, the poet. That was a raven, wasn't it? Well, twas. But ain't got a raven, just a crow. Now you get down there. Looks fine, don't he? acquainted all over again. Well, we got lots of time. <laughs> Amy, about this talk in town. 
Oh, gonna mend that. Just as soon as I get time. <laughs> you know, Ben worries too much. I told him so when he... Come on, now move over. When he asked me if he could write to you. There, you see, you don't come back to me. Anyway, they're just talking foolishness in town. I'm sure they are. But I'm here to stay, Amy, and take care of you. Heaven knows I owe it to you. Oh, you don't owe me nothing, Margaret, nor sigh neither. But it's right kindly of you to come, and you're welcome. I'm pretty handy, though, you know, at taking care of myself. But it'll be good to have you, if you can stand my housekeeping. <laughs> you know, I, I get busy and I just let things go. Oh. Not so. Everything looks just fine. Well, either you're blind or I am. No, the, the floor needs mopping and the curtains need washing. Well, I can be a help. House needs painting, too. Been meaning to get to that, but you know, I can't decide what color it should be. <laughs> White would be nice. But then it'd take two coats to cover. Why, it would look nice. Barn red would be cheaper. I'll have to ask Cy. He'll tell me what to do. Won't he, huh? Ask him. But, but Amy, Cyrus is dead. Well, that don't mean that I still can't ask him. Well, I wouldn't do nothing without first talking it over with Cyrus. but I ain't much of a hand at making them. I don't know. I cut them straight, but they always hang like they was going uphill. <laughs> I'll make the curtains. Yo, boy. Hi, uh, Amy. Nice of you to drop by. Oh, glad you're too late for coffee. Well, we had our coffee long ago while you... Pardon me, ma'am. No, while you ladies were still asleep. Asleep? Why, well, I had the animals fed and watered and the eggs gathered and breakfast on the stove before it was light enough to blow out the lander. That's what I said. I got up late. Come here, I want to show you something. Mm. Pick this little baby up on the road when you're coming in. Mm. What happened here? Mm. Looks like he took a shot in the leg. Mm -hmm. must have mistaken him for a deer. Must have been blind. We'll put that splint on. I did. Clean break. There wasn't a splinter nowhere. Well, you done a good job. You brought him to the right place, too. Oh, Miss Amy, we wouldn't put you out none. We we could take care of Ponderosa, couldn't we? Well, sure, but how'd you like to ride all the way out there with a the broken leg? <laughs> put him in the barn. I had a feeling you might say that. Here we go, babe. You shouldn't have bought them for me, Amy. I've never worn trousers in my life. Well, it's time you did. Besides, you look pretty funny pitching hay in one of them tea party dresses. I... Well, I, I hadn't thought of that. How about a drink? A what? Lemonade. You're right, I didn't mean lemonade. Come on. Amy Wilder, decent women don't go into saloons, much less drinking them. Oh, this is Virginia City, not Atlanta. Besides, there's plenty of women inside. Come and see for yourself. Hi, Miss Amy. <laughs> Miss Amy, where have you been? We well, miss you. I got more to do with a lollygag around the saloon, you know. <laughs> this here is my sister-in-law, Margaret. She comes from Atlanta. Georgia. Oh. She's, she's real genteel-like now, so you behave yourselves, you hear? <laughs> sure. Margaret, this here is Sally. That's Mary Ann. How did How you do, Miss Wilder? Oh, ain't they sweet? Oh, I just love to be around young people, you know, so full of life. Come on in. We're going to have a real party now, you... <laughs> What's the matter with you? 
kind of manners is that? Atlanta kind? I will not associate with that kind of woman. And neither should you. You just do what you want, and I'll do what I want, like always. You want to stay out here and die of thirst? It's up to you. Hi, Miss Can I buy you a drink? Nope. The drinks is on me, like always. Hi. Hi. You're, you're Margaret Wilder, aren't you? I've been wanting to meet you. I'm Barton Roberts. You may have heard of me. Yes, I've heard the names. Yes, I'm sure Amy has mentioned me. But really, I'm not the black-hearted villain that she thinks I am. Truly, Miss Wilder, I am concerned only for her own good. Amy may be a little eccentric, Please. but... Please. Telling the truth is only going to hurt her. Senile is a much better word. Miss Wilder, I have offered her a... A fine price for a piece of worthless land. And all she'll say is that uh, I'm trying to steal from God's creatures. I, I don't understand. All right. Amy owns a piece of land on a creek up near Carson. Now, I have offered her far more than it's worth. She says the fish in that stream would suffer. Really? I swear it. Fish. Oh, and the birds. Now, is that rational? Yes, it, it seems strange. Miss Wilder, I think it would be wise if you wrote the papers, had her committed. No. Amy may need looking at her, but she is harmless. to that. Building fence is hot work. Sweats it right out of a man. Fence? Where? Got him here, boss. Better look out. He's got a rifle. Told you, but you had to do it again. One scene hung up on the wire last time and a hundred others die in a third. <laughs> Kill me. 
get this straight. Amy tore down this fence after she was warned by Judge McIntyre. And this time she tried to kill me. She was very excited. Excited enough to try and commit murder? That woman's dangerous. I'll talk to her. You'll do more than that. You'll sign papers to see that she's put away where she can be taken care of. Please. I can't do that. All right. Then she'll stand trial for attempted murder. And you'll have to testify against her as an eyewitness. And she'll go to jail for a long time. Probably for the rest of her life. Raise your right hand. <laughs> you swear to tell the truth, the whole truth, and nothing but the truth. So help you God. I do. Please be seated. The purpose of this inquiry is to determine the mental competence of one Amy Wilder. Pertinent to that, this document signed by Barton Roberts asks that she be remanded to the grand jury to face a charge of attempted murder. Or alternatively, that she be committed to an institution as mentally incompetent and totally dangerous. If anybody ought to be locked up, it's him. Now sit down, Amy. Well, it's true. Mrs. Wilder, you will be given ample opportunity to speak in your own defense until that time. I earnestly suggest that you be quiet. This document, signed by Margaret Wilder, asks that she be made the legal guardian of Amy Wilder. Many of the facts are already a matter of court record. Before inquiring into the latest destruction of Mr. Robert's fence, the court has some questions as to the ability of Amy Wilder to manage her financial affairs. Mr. Eads? Yes. Mr. Eads, it mentions here eccentric behavior and wasted funds. Well, it's my money, ain't it? Could you tell us something about this, Mr. Eads? Yes, well, I have all the bank records here. Uh, Cy left Amy well provided for but his investments have seen some reverses. Uh, there's nothing I could do. These were size investments, and Amy didn't want to make any changes. I've tried to get her to economize, but... Well, I have, Arnold Eads, and you know it. Well, it's true. House needs painting, the curtains are falling apart. I, I haven't had me a new pair of pants since, since the fall of Babylon. <clears throat> Will you please go on, Mr. Eads? She's been piling up a lot of bills uh, for stuff she doesn't need. Salt blocks for wild game and uh, bird seed. Not just two or three pounds, well, sacks the of it. birds eat it. And hay and grain and then uh, her saloon bills and... I don't know no All these that. fines. And yet she refuses an excellent offer from Barton Roberts for attractive brush land that she says she'll never use. Well, Dear, and then she refuses to want. cut her monthly check for Margaret Wilder. Amy, why didn't you tell me? No need to. Now, there's mention here of the strange way Mrs. Wilder speaks of her deceased husband, or rather speaks to him. I'd like to have that clarified. Ain't nothing strange about it, young fella. You've been married to a man 40 years. He ain't never dead for you. Not even if you've seen him laying there in the coffin. Judge McIntyre, may I? When someone you love dies, afterward, even long afterward, you can still see him, hear his voice, the sound of the laughter, feel them in the room with you. Yes. Would know what they'd think. It's a normal thing. You were one of those I asked to speak today, Ben. I'd like to hear what else you have to say. Oh, 
Well, <clears throat> oh, about those enormous expenses Mr. Heeds was talking about. <laughs> well, Amy, Amy loves and cares for her wildlife. That's all it amounts to. Are you saying that her extreme behavior is rational, then? I think we're all apt to act uh, eccentrically, if we care enough about something. Even to using a gun? Well, the full story of that hasn't been told yet. It will be, Mr. Cartwright. Your Honor, it wasn't enough that she pulled out my fences time and time again in the face of a court order. But this time, she brought a rifle with her. She put a bullet within inches of my head. And if I hadn't been moving, I'd have been killed. Inches? It was closer than that. If I'd have wanted to hit you, I'd have hit you, whether you was moving or setting. And maybe the next time I will, that, too. That will do. We have used up this day. Mrs. Wilder, I don't want to put you in jail, but I will have to unless you can promise to behave. No fighting, no firearms of any sort. I promise. Today is Friday. This hearing is adjourned until Monday morning at 10 o'clock, at which time the court will give its decision. Wrong, wasn't it? That's a bad thing to say. Well, it wasn't the best, maybe. Oh, no, maybe about it. I saw the judge's face. I know what he thought. Well, you can't blame him. Nothing for it. He's got to send Amy Wilder to the loony bin. <laughs> oh, don't fret, my dear. You tried to help. Come on, Amy. We'll take you home. No, I, I'd rather you didn't. I can find my way. I've been doing it for years. Say you can do me one favor, though. Take Margaret home with you. Let her see how, how pretty the Ponderosa is. I'd be happy to. You won't be lonely, Amy. Never was. Sai will be with me and all my friends. Yeah. Mm -hmm. 
No, now this is for Harriet. You're going out in the kitchen. Here you are, Harriet. Go on, go on, out in the kitchen. folks they was all right just talking loud and fast the way people do when they don't know what they're saying but it was all right my dear judge wanted to know how come i could talk to you Ben Cartwright spoke up for us. He told him. expected to see you back here this morning after yesterday's session. Mm. Did you drop in in the hope of influencing my decision? I'd like to. Well, that's honest, at least. But I know better. Of course you do. So? It's a lovely day out. Much too nice a day to be inside here reading all these musty law books. I thought you might like to go for a ride. Any special reason? Well, whenever I have a tough decision to make, I like to have as much information as possible. I thought maybe a ride would uh, help you out, too. But you're not trying to influence my decision. I am. But only by showing you things I think you ought to see. 
field research. Mm -hmm. I was thinking of that myself. But no speeches. If there are any questions, I'll ask them. That's just the way I'd like it, Your Honor. Is this where Roberts built all these fences? That's right. That raises a question. Why build a fence here? Now that, Your Honor, is a very good question. Cage yesterday. Addressed to me. Last will and testament. Amy? 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 <laughs> Amy? Amy, it's Ben Cartwright. Amy, I know you're in there. Amy? Amy, what's the matter? Feeling poorly? I've never seen you take a nap in the daytime in your life. Can if I want to. I found your will. You was meant to. Your name was on it. Amy. What's the matter? You think I, I'm too sick in the head to write one? You know better than that. I can write one if I want to. They ain't said I, I'm loony yet. Not official. I can stay here if I want to, too. I'm my own boss. Till Monday. Of course you are. Is there anything I can do for you? Yep. Could get out of here and leave me alone. She's fine, but she's going to stay in bed. This is quite a will. She leaves all her property at Carson to the state of Nevada to be used for a park and game refuge, all wildlife to be protected. One half of her money to be given to Margaret Weiler, the other half to be used for winter feed, salt, bird seed, hay for animals in this area. Pretty generous. 
I suppose some people will call that pretty extravagant. I'm sure some people will. After all, it's no ordinary thing buying hay for deer. Might be described as... Strange, loony, not right in the head. Is that what you think? Just because I buy hay for deer? Well, you wouldn't call a rancher feeble in the mind, would you? Just because he, he buys winter feed for his stock or, or lays out salt or worries about how well they are, would you? Now, let me tell you, and you're going to listen to me because this is my house and you can't shut me up here. They're wild things. They're God's critters. But they're my livestock. Just as Ben's cattle is his livestock. Oh, I don't drive them to market or sell them, but they're my livestock. And I can take care of them any way I want to. And the will is legal. Was rope before you decided to lock me up. I haven't decided anything yet. And another thing, they're a hull lot prettier alive than they are when they're hung up on wire or, or dying of thirst. They're just plain beautiful. And you'd know it, too, if you just opened your eyes and looked around a little. I have. Mrs. Wilder, sit down, please. Hello. You know, already today I've met several friendly witnesses. Mm -hmm. Squirrel. Never got around to naming him, poor little fellow. You know, first he was scared, but sometimes now he, he brings his kin along with him. Mrs. Wilder, that fence, have you found many deer hurt with that wire? Told you. Trying to get to water, wire strung up in the shadows. Deer didn't see it. Got cut up something off. You know, Mrs. Wilder, the law is a two-edged sword. Cuts both ways. It is against the law to shoot at someone with intent to hurt or to kill. It's also against the law to provoke someone into shooting. Ben? I'm going to speak to the prosecutor. Mr. Roberts must learn not to try to use the law for his own profit. Good. Did you hear that sigh? I'm sure he did, Amy. I'm sure he did. <laughs> Amy, you haven't eaten all day. I want you to just sit here with the judge and have a little nice talk, and I'll uh, get some soup ready for you. Why, the very idea. This is my house, and it's my kitchen, and anybody going to do any cooking around here, it's me. No, sir. We're going we're gonna to have us some steak and, and potatoes and, and canned corn and, and green beans and, and peaches for dessert. Was he saying what I thought he was saying, Ben? Mrs. Wilder, I like it here. I hope you invite me back very often. You mean I'm going to be here? Oh, glory. Glory. outside, waiting. Margaret, supper will be ready before you've washed your 
face. Now get on in here and set the gate. together it'd be shame not to keep in touch you look me up now whenever you get to town no i don't believe i will why not i'll buy you a beer i don't drink mister well, coffee what about coffee help yourself me i pick my own friends thanks for stopping go ahead and take it away ah, heat up ah! <laughs> Or nothing. People like you take all the sport out of drinking. I was on the verge of despair. You still are. I'm not going to loan you any money, Charlie. I got something that's too big for me to handle. I was hoping against hope. What do I find the best in the bit? Not one red cent. It's big and easy. He's a greenhorn like you wouldn't believe. Hay seeds in his hair and money coming out his ears. Somebody's going to clean him like that. Unless you and me do it first. Tell me more. Hey, Paul, look who's here. Hey, Kelly. Chris Kelly, how are you? Good fine, to see you. Good fine, to see you. When did you get in? Just a little bit ago. Yeah? I saw him down the road about four miles walking. Well, uh, how'd you make out in the gold fields? Any luck? I found a little gold. Yeah? Good. I told him he could have his old job back. Oh, sure. Of course he can. Hey, what's a big gold operator like you uh, wanted to work as a cowhand for? Well, I uh, figured if a man's got a little money, he ought to be happy. But it didn't work out that way. People are always hanging around me, slapping me on the back, calling me friend and pard, mm -hmm. always trying to get my money. That's enough to gag a rattlesnake. Mm -hmm. Some people are like that. Sure will be a pleasure to get out there in the bunkhouse and get settled. Well, of course, the best way to protect yourself is to say as little as possible about your money. That's just what I got in mind. It's especially important right now, Chris. There's a bunch of confidence men in town. Sheriff doesn't know who they are, but he does know a lot of people have been swindled. Now, if it were to become known that you had struck it rich, they'd be on your back in no time. Well, how much do you make? Oh, uh, 67,000. 67,000? Hey, friend, hard. Listen, we, uh, we <laughs> want to talk to you about a couple of things. <laughs> no, don't you dare talk to anybody about how much money you made. You're not carrying it around with you, are you? No, I, I bought me a letter of credit. Oh, another good idea. You take that letter of credit into the bank first thing in the morning. Oh, and uh, if anybody tries to send you to City Hall or the county jail cheap, <laughs> you tell us about it. Right. Come on, let's get settled. Thanks, Mr. Carter. Listen, did you, did you ever think about buying a bunkhouse? I got to use a bunkhouse out there, and I got loaded. Sixty-seven thousand dollars.
Gentlemen. Charlie Pitch. The Alderman. Obi Miles. How you doing? Walking. My pleasure. What do you want to see us about, Howard? Charlie says he's lined up a sucker for us here in town. I thought you wanted to go on to Danvers in the morning. This could be good. All right, we've made five scores here already. No fixing with the sheriff. I figure it's time to move on. I think we ought to be able to pull off one more without any trouble. Depends if it's worth it. How much money this chump's got? Charlie? The story is he made it pretty good in a gold field. You the double-jointed fellow they call Loose Charlie? That's me. He falls in front of carriages, throws himself out of joint, and yells and carries on. What do you pick up for a thing like that? Fifteen, twenty bucks? Yeah, generally. His idea of a big score in ours might be something different. Charlie put me on to something good a couple of years ago. This could run maybe three, four thousand dollars. Oh, more like five times that. Second thought, maybe we better take a look at this chum. Indeed. That's the mark. Looks like a real cinch. There's a couple problems. I'll see how quick I can pick him up. Buy him a few drinks. Oh, he doesn't drink. All right. Buy him coffee. Stay with him. We'll get him in a game tonight. He doesn't gamble. We'll teach him. He knows. He's against all forms of wagering. That knocks out poker. And the race wire. We'll let the alderman try the stock market swindle. Uh-uh. Why not? He's a country boy. You say stock, and he thinks you mean cows. Charlie, is there anything else you haven't told us about this Yahoo? Well, he tips his hat to ladies. And he's honest. How honest? All the way, straight as air. His name is Christian Keller. But is he ripe for picking? I mean... Don't count on it. Charlie, thanks for nothing. He deposited $67,000. Are you sure? Positive. Well, it may be a little time-consuming, but I guess we're going to have to sell him something. Yeah. Mm-hmm. And, uh, what kind of company was that again? A Patent Reaper Company. Patent Reaper Company. Well, that is a rich, full sound. And how did they pick you up? I was sitting there having a cup of coffee, and this fellow comes up to me. Walt, his name is. Mm -hmm. And he says, did I drop my wallet? And sure enough, underneath my chair, there's this wallet. So you looked into it, and you found out who owned it. Hmm? That's right, Mr. Hobie Miles. And the wallet was stuffed with money. Was it? So, of course, you took the wallet right back to Mr. Hobie Miles at the hotel. And Mr. Miles just happened to own a patent reaper company. That's right. You know, I was finding wallets all the time up north. Well, they sure didn't waste any time, did they? No, but they didn't try and sell me anything. They just kept talking about how much money the stockholders in this company are going to make. But they, uh, they did say I could see the plans. Did they? And when do you see these people again? In the morning. And I asked him if I could bring a friend along. And they, uh, they said he'd be welcomed. Very good. I look forward to seeing a patent reaper. There you are, gentlemen. This little beauty will revolutionize harvesting. We already have orders from all these machines that we can possibly manufacture in a year. You know, I think that could be a very big success. It already is. Well, uh, when I was here before, uh, said something about stock. Walt said that... Uh, Walt? What did Walt say? He said maybe we could buy some stock. He did, did he? What'd you say that for? You know every share of stock was spoken four months ago. I thought, Mr. Ma... That's the problem. You didn't think. Now, gentlemen, I thought you came up here to see these drawings. I never dreamed Mr. King would give you the idea you could buy stock. I've, uh, I've refused uh, old friends, even members of my own family. Oh, well, I'm uh, very sorry. I... I'm sorry we've troubled you. Uh, no, no, wait now. 
Mr. Miles, Mr. Kelly, he is a friend of yours. He returned your wallet with more than a thousand dollars in it. Uh, he's an honest man, a, a deserving man. I admit that. And but... Mr. Kelly's friend, Mr. Cartwright, why, he owns one of the largest ranches hereabouts. He could be of great help in getting the reaper sale started in this area. Think about it, Mr. Miles. You be helping a man who helped you and also helping your reaper company. Well, now, there was a block of stock I was saving for a man who was supposed to be here two days ago. He hasn't shown up yet. So under the circumstances, I suppose I can let you have that. Thank you, Mr. Miles. It'd be expensive. Cost you $71,000. Well, I haven't got that much. <clears throat> well, uh, Chris, I, uh, I just might be able to come up with the difference. Cash or certified check, no later than tomorrow morning. Yeah, well, uh, we could, uh, we could get, get over to the bank and get things started. Well, thank you very much. It's I, all right. It's uh, awfully nice of you to allow us to participate in this. It's all right. A reasonable profit on an investment is always welcome, but this also offers us a chance to help every rancher in Nevada. All right, gentlemen. We'll see you shortly. Hey, homie, you're Jim Dandy. Well, I was in top form, if I do say so myself. <laughs> and so was Ben Cartwright. <laughs> oh, Cartwright and Chris Bell are coming up with the money. Mm-hmm. In marked bills with the sheriff in the next room. Huh? Don't you know a smart man when you see one? A man like Ben Cartwright isn't going to make a heavy investment after one meeting in a hotel room. So pack your things, both of you. You're leaving town right now. I guess we better. And this teaches me the virtues of humility. And what about you? Mr. Blackwell? Hmm? Obi wants to know what uh, you're going to do. You never give up. Not you. A wise man knows when it's time to quit. What happened, Ben? I'll tell you what happened, Clem. Mr. Miles and company have disappeared. Vamos, checked out. I'll be. I had the room next door, right? I was going to wait till you handed the money and then nail them. Sure. Now, what could have spooked them? Maybe we were too willing to buy. Well, we chased them out of town anyway. I mean, that's not as good as putting them in jail, but it's something. Oh, it is. Eh? Well, it's a job for me, is what it is. I've got to try and pick up the trail now. Yes, you do, Clem. Good luck. Well, thanks a lot, Ben. Well, let's get back to work. I'm fine. I've been dragged across what oh. must have been half of Nevada by a runaway horse that was guaranteed gentle and trustworthy. I've been battered and bruised. Yes, I'm just fine. Yeah, I guess you are. What do you mean? I'm just fine. Otherwise, you wouldn't be able to make a speech like that if you weren't. You sure of that? Pretty sure. Well, he's, uh, he's settled down now. What scared him? Why'd you run away? He saw a snake in the road. 
Oh, see there? That's why he took off. Here you go. Let me help you down. All right. Oh! 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 I'm, I'm sorry. Oh, that's all right. I should be getting used to it. Look, I'll just hold him in a minute. You get on down. Are you sure? Yeah. Okay. Thank you. I was beginning to think you didn't know much about horses. Yeah, it could be, but I, uh, I know more about horses than I do about ladies. Oh? Well, I think it's a mistake to ask this, but I'm going to anyway. Just what do you mean by that? Nothing, except I thought you might get mad at me again for the horse getting scared. Oh, no. Anything but. I certainly haven't been very polite, have I? You saved my life, and I've scolded you as if the whole thing were your fault. I was thinking it was. I'm sorry. I can't even thank you properly. I don't know your name. Chris, ma'am. Chris Keller. Charity McGill. And I do thank you. You're welcome. Look, Miss McGill, why don't you get up here in the buggy? It's all right. Come on. And I'll tell you what we'll do. We'll go to the Ponderosa. I work there. Not too far from here. Both you and your horse can get rested up. You ever heard of the Ponderosa? No. The biggest ranch in these parts. Mr. Cartwright owns it. Well, you know more about ladies than you think you do. Let's go. Well, I think I've got that horse all settled down now. Well, I guess I'm all settled down, too. Well, I better get started. Well, Miss McGill, it's a long ride to Virginia City. Wouldn't be any trouble if you'd like to stay over or if you want one of us to drive you back. Oh, you've done quite enough already, Mr. Cartwright. Thank you so much. You're more than welcome. Well, goodbye, and thank you all. Nice meeting you. I'll Bye. walk you to the buggy. I'm afraid I'll never be able to repay you, Mr. Keller. Well, don't think anything about it. Strikes gold and rescues a pretty girl. Some fellas have all the luck. Yeah, well, it's kind of cute. It seems very nice. Mr. Cartwright? Hmm? If I get all those uh, strays in this afternoon, uh, can I have tomorrow off? Uh, <clears throat> yes, I, I suppose so. Uh, any particular reason you'd like to have the day off? Uh, I just thought I'd ride into Virginia City. Yeah, well, he's got money in the bank. He probably wants to win and watch it grow. <laughs> Can I give you a hand? Well, I would appreciate that. Just up to the hotel? Uh-huh. How have you been? Fine. Uh, lemon drops. Try and chew them up quick so I can talk. <laughs> Do you have any peppermint? What was salt? Mm, thank you. I have an awful sweet tooth. So do I. I go around like this half the time. Say, did you get back to town all right the other day? No, I was captured by Indians, bought by a band of wandering gypsies, and finally rescued by the cavalry. That sounds terrible. Was. I nearly missed dinner. <laughs> ah, fish hooks. I know. They're too big. No, they're about right. Mm -mm. They're too big. I don't like to dispute a lady. Well, don't then. Have you done any fishing? Certainly. What kind? Chub, dace, catfish. Well, there you are. And trout and salmon. These things must be for sharks. You like to fish? Oh, yes. So do I. Miss McGill, I, uh... Yes? Nothing. Forget it. Well, it was awfully nice seeing you again, Mr. Keller. And thank you very much. My pleasure. <laughs> well, goodbye. Bye.
Miss McGill. I, uh, I don't suppose you'd... Yes, I would. I'll be ready first thing in the morning. Oh, and those fish hooks are too big. Superstition fish can't hear. What you have to watch out for is letting your shadow fall on the water. Oh, your shadow's not going to fall in the water this time of day. Look at there. Uh huh? Here. Worms. Oh, no. Is that deep, I suppose? Of course. Grasshoppers, on the surface. Charity, your ignorance is pitiful. I'm going to go downstream and work that for a while. Hey, it's a pure waste of time. We'll see. Can I borrow one of your grasshoppers? <laughs> I've had a wonderful time, Chris. So have I. May I have my key, please? Maybe tomorrow I can, uh, I can get off early and come into town and I'll, I'll take you to supper. Is there anything wrong? I don't think so. Are you sure? No, it's just some business. You go along, Chris. I'll talk to you later. Say so. Charity? It's all right, Chris. Everything all right? Sure, a couple more hours and we'll have her finished. Good. See you later. Mr. Cartwright. Yeah? Uh, can I speak to you for a few minutes? Sure, Chris. I was over uh, taking a look at Ed Newhall's place the other day. And he's thinking of selling. Oh, yeah, yeah. Well, I was just wondering what you thought about it. Well, Ed Newhall's place is uh, a good land there. Nice little, uh, nice little house. Good outbuildings, too. My impression, too. Mm -hmm. Just needs a little work. Are you interested? Yeah. Well, since those, uh, the swindlers took off, I thought I'd put the money to good use. Find a ranch, huh? Yeah, I know it's reaching kind of high, but, uh, well, Charity McGill's the finest girl I ever met. Well, now, you thinking of getting married, too? Uh, yeah, I'm, I'm thinking about it. I haven't asked her yet. I haven't got up the nerve. I don't know what she'll do when I, when I do ask her. <laughs> you mean you, you don't know her well enough to know what she's liable to say? Well, sure I do. I know that uh, her father died recently and that she lives in Sacramento and she's here on business. And there's this fellow that's given her some kind of a problem. But I expect everything's going to work out all right. I sure hope so. Yeah, yeah, so do I, Chris. Sure do. Meanwhile, getting to know her better is all to the good. No marriage is for a long, long time. Over 
in the Russian river, I tied into a big old steelhead. Boy, did he give me a fight. We're not doing very well today, are we? No. What time is it? Oh, one, one thirty in there. Why? Well, I have to be back to see the lawyer this afternoon. But there's still time. Honey, if there's anything I can do to help. No, no, it's just some affairs of my father's. Go on with the story. Oh, well, I... I wrestled with him for 20 minutes to a half hour easy. He was a real old sock to locker. That big. That's the gospel. How big? More like that. I thought so. What'd I do? I've got a bite! <laughs> So I guess I'll go on home. How soon? Day after tomorrow. That's kind of sudden. Yes, I suppose. When will you be coming back? I don't believe I will. I mean, there's no real reason to. Guess not. You can come visit me. No, I don't think I want to. I'll write to you. Will you miss me? Oh. Charity, you're not going anywhere, because I love you, and we're going to get married. that and dreading it at the same time. What for? I can't, Chris. Why not? Well, you can't ask a man to take on a lot of unwanted problems. Well, not if you really and truly love him. <laughs> well, when my daddy died, about the only thing he left was the lead better number six. Well, that's a gold mine just below here. Yes, I know. Well, about two weeks ago, I got a letter from this man, Arthur Blackwell, saying that he had mortgages and liens against the mine, and if I didn't pay them, he was going to take the mine. I don't understand your problem, Miss Miguel. Let him take it. That mine was worked out years ago. No, Daddy said he found a new vein, but that's not the point. Mr. Blackwell's been saying that my father salted the mine and falsified the assay to swindle him. Well, I'm not going to let this man blacken my father's memory. I see. I told Charity I had some money. And the easiest thing in the world was for me to get her out of debt. Well, I don't think you should do that. Well, Chris, you realize what you're saying. You're, I mean, when you strip it all away, what you'd be doing is uh, buying a gold mine. As long as it'll help Charity. Well, it'd have to be a loan, Chris, with a new assay and the proper papers drawn up and everything. What is the amount of the debt? $65,000. Hmm. Well, well, well. If you like, we'll, uh, we'll help you uh, take the assay. I mean, getting ore samples out of an old mine shaft is no work for a young lady. Well, that's very nice of you. I'd appreciate that. Of course. Uh, I'll, uh, I'll write a note uh, for you to sign, giving us permission to be in your property. Thank you, Mr. Cartwright. Not at all. Get over to that mine right away tonight. Don't let anybody near it. Why, what do you think? It's a rather unusual story we just heard. Our oh, horse is down with the South Herd. Drop by there and tell them to meet us at the mine. I'll join you there in the morning. We just may be able to settle a couple of things. Ah, this hot coffee tastes good. Boy, it got cold last night. Oh, you're not kidding. Yeah. 
Have any visitors? Nope, nope, no one. Not at all? Yeah, from the looks of this place, nobody's been here in a year. Yeah. I'm gonna get the equipment here. I'm gonna get some samples all along the shaft. Maybe five feet or so. All right. I uh, want to get some core samples, too. About uh, six feet into the face. Well, might as well get started, huh? <sighs> Figure these. Samples are worthless. I don't see how there could be anything of any value in that mine. Well, at least Charity's been honest about it. She's the one that wanted the assay report. I'm still troubled by the fact that the amount of money that she owes happens to be almost exactly the amount of money that Chris has in the bank. Isn't that strange? Well, I think it's just a coincidence. I think you're barking up the wrong tree. Well, I hope so. Meanwhile, let's, uh, let's stick to the plan. If anybody tries to solve those samples, we'll let them look the other way. All right. I'll wait here for Hoss. Oh, uh, yeah. Yeah, all right. Whoa. Whoa. Yeah, we can leave it out here watch from the inside. Well, that'll give them the chance they want. And we can have a beer. Not a bad idea. and not even a nip. Two free beers and a free lunch? It wasn't all wasted. Yeah, I suppose you're right. You bring Rock to maybe so office? Maybe so office? Maybe so you get rich. Maybe so you don't. Maybe so. Yeah. <laughs> maybe. <laughs> ah, young men in search of a fortune bringing in a wagon load of high-grade ore for the ASA office. Solid gold rocks. I can tell by the feel of them. That's really our day for dingbats, isn't it? <laughs> Let's get this stuff inside. <laughs> The answer report was uh, brought back about an hour ago by Joan Candy. Now, uh, most of the samples were proved worthless. That's to be expected. But according to this report, apparently there's a vein of ore in that mine which assays out at an average of $2,500 a ton. Hey, that's great. Oh, I never doubted it. And that's almost exactly the same figure Daddy had. Now, all we have to do is get the money to Mr. Blackwell, and we'll have everything nailed down for you. For us. There's one other thing. Um, this report is based on one set of samples. Uh, we took two sets, as identical as we could possibly make them. My son, Hoss, is having the second set assayed in Carson City right now. Well, isn't that unusual? Just an added precaution. It's more than that. Well, let Mr. Cartwright tell me. Well, if the, uh, the two reports agree, then everything's all right. There's no problem. 
They don't. He's saying there's something funny going on. Like what? Something. That's why he's getting two assays. Well, I think it's a good idea. I don't. Oh, Chris, stop fussing, and it's time we were leaving. Well, please let me know as soon as you get the report. Of course. Thank you. the second report, huh? Well, the samples were the same as the others. Not quite. The best of these samples showed a value of a dollar six. That man's been manned up. The samples are just like the other ones. We got them at the same time from the same places. Sorry, Chris. She was trying to swindle me all the time. That's what she's trying to do. She wouldn't accept any help after I told her you were waiting for a second report. I had to beg her to take the money. But you did take it. Sure she did. Now, I'm not sure if I can get it back, but I'm going to try. I'd appreciate it if you ride along with me. Sure. My darling niece, where are you going? Well, I was going to leave Virginia City, but I wanted to see you first. Commander Boom, since you have the money that we all jointly earned from that young man, we do have to split it up. Well, I've been thinking about that. Uncle Arthur, I've made a decision about of this whole thing. Of course you have, my dear. All beginners come to that same decision the first time out. It's just buck fever. Come on. We'll have that little talk. Hmm? A great day, gentlemen. Truly a great day. Well, that's right, Arch. I mean, Mr. Blackwell. <laughs> there. Bleed, you rascal. <laughs> ah, greatest little invention since the wheel. Saw anything and everything. Uh, with the liquid essence of gold. <laughs> you are a good man. So are you, Charlie. From now on, you stick with us. <laughs> Much obliged. And now let us drink to that little lady without whose feminine charms and quick wit, none of this would have been possible. Here, here. To you, my dear niece, our heartfelt thanks. You did well on your first venture into the confidence world. Extremely well. Pity you had an attack of conscience. My dear, you must learn. Never give a sucker his money back. The real pity is you could have been one of the great ones. So, hail, farewell. <laughs> talking any time. I'm sorry, Chris. Sure you are. They got you tied up here like a Christmas turkey. No wonder you're sorry. All right. Oh. Who tied you up, Miss McGill? My uncle and his bunch. They're on their way to Carson City. They said they were going to Denver, but I know they're going to Carson. When did they leave? Oh, 30, 40 minutes ago in a buggy. Oh, Chris, I know you're not going to believe this, but I was trying to bring the money back. All of it when Uncle Arthur caught me. You're right. I don't believe it. Come on, let's go find him. Look at this. Oh, yeah. Hey, wait, I'm going. 
going with you. If we gave all the money back, we'd only get about nine or ten years. Don't be a fool. All right. You let us go. We'll leave the money behind. Otherwise, I'll burn it up. Every dollar. Money's here and a lot more. They must have got it from them other fellas. Six weeks. Hard work. We let a chump like you take it away from us. There's no justice in the world. Your fault. My kin, but you don't take after my side of the family. Well, I'm sure my fiance won't mind. You're who? My fiance. Fella named Chris Keller. We're going to be married. We're gonna be what? I know you won't believe this now, but it's true. I found out I couldn't steal, not even once. Because I love you, you big loot. And I'll convince you if it takes the rest of my life. Well, it won't take that long. I love you, Chris, honest. Those are the prettiest words I ever heard. I'll make him a good wife, really. You know something, Chris? I believe she will. <laughs> <laughs> 